The 2025 schedule has been released, and we're breaking that down today on the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your host, Justin Goddard. Bills Mafia, welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show on the Buffalo Fanbase Podcast Network. My name is Justin, and I'm your host today, and... We officially have the 2025 schedule. Um, I know this is like a super exciting calendar day for a lot of people, um, especially in Bills Mafia with how much we travel for games, you know, to be able to start getting some of those plans underway and all that. Um, I'll be honest from the top here, we've known these opponents for a while, Um We've known that it's going to be a diff- difficult schedule with the AFC in general seemingly getting more top heavy every year. Um, obviously, playing first place schedule. Um, so, we've kind of known, I guess, kind of generally what this is going to look like for a while, um, at least opponents wise and stuff. I think there is still a lot to to gain from looking at the schedule. Um, It's just not the biggest day marked on my calendar. We know that we have a competitive team. We know Josh Allen. Um, It's just kind of when you get the tough games that we're looking at, like, damn, that's a matchup right now. Um, The Bills are going to be favored in most of these games. We have a, a lot of, a lot of change on this team. Um, so how some of that shakes out and the timing of some of this, it, it does matter. Um, but ultimately for me, before we get the schedule, after we get the schedule, this is more go out there and either do it or don't. Um, yes, with some of the changes that we have, um, there's a little bit more nuance to figure out to it. Um you got number 17 under center. You got a chance every year. I like a lot of the changes that are made it, uh, on this team. Um, so I feel good about it. And just kind of starting out looking at the schedule, I'll say the number one thing I don't like that's always going to be an unpopular opinion. Um, it's quite contrary to what I always wanted <laughs> as a drought team. Uh, is the primetime games. Um, I'm a Sunday at 1 o'clock kind of guy. When we were going through the drought years, I was always pissed off that, you know, why are the Bills never in primetime? I, I was a young fan. I didn't really really think about too much going, uh, the, the logistics that go into making the schedule. Um, I just always wanted the Bills to be in primetime. Why are you disrespecting my team with J.P. Lossman at quarterback? Um now that we have them all the time, I'd, I'd prefer, <laughs> I always prefer Sunday at one o'clock. I think it's elite football time. Um, the older I get, the more I don't want to stay up till midnight watching a football game. Um, it, it always goes one or one of two ways. Like I'm real hyped up from a win and I want to like rewatch highlights or rewatch the game on NFL plus immediately. Uh, or it's a tough loss, and then I'm all frustrated, and I don't want to go to bed right away. Either way, those late games, whenever the game wraps up, add a couple hours. Um, so that gets more challenging for me the older I get. But we'll dive into it and kind of look at how how the season's shaking out. I do want to start out with the preseason. I know nobody cares about the preseason right now. Nobody cares about the preseason when we're in it. I personally love the preseason. I I don't know if this has come from like growing up being a fan of a team that was like so bad. Like I was just looking for, you know, what fringe roster players might be the franchise savior. I don't know what it is. I personally. L- I love the the preseason for looks at some of these younger guys that we might not actually see hit the field for a couple of years and just kind of seeing how the position battles play out. Um, the one 
biggest interesting thing for the preseason for me is we have Caleb Williams in his NFL debut. I know it ends up being a meaningless game, but I, I listen, the rest of the schedule, we don't get that many young quarterbacks. This is, you know, touted as this generational franchise changing quarterback, you know, can't miss prospect. I want to, I want to see how our overhaul defense matches up against that caliber quarterback. Um, also added Roma Dunze, some great receiving talent there. So I think that's a great matchup to kind of grease the wheels coming back into the season. Um, and then the other game of preseason I'll talk about is Carolina. Um, obviously a trade back partner with the Bills during this draft and they pick up Xavier Leggett. Who if you're, you know, a fan of this show, that it's a guy that I wanted in the draft. Obviously, the Bills liked Coleman more. We're comfortable moving around in the draft to um, pass up on players like Legat and Worthy to to take Coleman, who is their guy. Um, so just kind of a, a first look at Legat for me. Um, but that's kind of like a personal selfish one of like. Was I right? Was I wrong? Historically, if I was a betting man, I would I would say that I was wrong. Um, so then starting out the season at home against the Cardinals, uh, this is this is a team that looking at you know who the opponents were going to be and how it's going to shake out. Um, it's a team that I was excited to have when I saw it early in the season. Um, I, th- I think they're kind of turning around and headed in the right direction. Um, Kyler Murray is going to be back healthy, um, but still a, a ton of change inside that organization, a team that's kind of been not great for some time. And, you know, even if they're headed on the upswing, obviously adding Marvin Harrison Jr. to the mix, um, it takes a while for everything to get on track. And I, I know... The Bills have some things to get on track as well. Um, I think we just have more continuity, more carryover. Um, Kind of like at the top end of the roster. Um, So getting the Cardinals early while they're still kind of figuring out how everything's going to look for them. um, I like that. You should be... No questions, hands down. You should be starting the season 1-0. Um, gonna have some weird conversation <laughs> conversations here uh, if they don't start out one and zero against that Cardinals team. Um, week two, we're going to Miami. That's gonna be a Thursday night game. Um, I'm never gonna like Miami early in the season. I know there's all kinds of math and formulas of how they make the schedule and how they rotate things. Um. I think they did a decent job of kind of like negating the weather advantage for either team. Um, Being Buffalo going to Miami in week two, but it's a night game. So, you know, you don't have the blaring sun. It's still going to be hot. It's still going to be humid. Um, But that that blaring sun on the sideline is it's an absolute game changer. Um, But then we'll get to this later. Um, Miami's coming to Buffalo in November and Buffalo's crazy with its weather. We've certainly had, you know, November storms, but for the most part, it's usually, you know, fall football weather, a little, little chilly, um, but nothing crazy weather wise. Um, for me personally, it, it, it's super simple NFL, just always switch those games. If you want to avoid um any chances of like severe weather advantages in either direction just Miami come to Buffalo early in the season Buffalo go to Miami late in the season easy peasy um it'll never happen here we are um so Miami being the first primetime game couple things I like about this um it's a Thursday night game if we're going to get stuck on playing Thursday night games, I'd rather get it out of the way early in the season. Um, I think the 
the big thing with the Thursday night games is the short weeks and, you know, you're already dealing with injuries and now you have a shorter week to get right. And I think all that matters more later in the season. You know, hopefully you've only played one game. You're overall pretty healthy. Um, Team's coming in fresh. There's no, you know, progressive fatigue going on yet. Um, So if we have to play a Thursday night game, give it to me early in the season. Um, This also starts the stretch of uh, four primetime games in five days. So if we go back to the top of the show where I'm a Monday at one o'clock kind, or I'm sorry, Sunday at one o'clock kind of guy, um, I'll say right off the jump for for me personally, don't love this stretch. Um, again, kind of for me, if, if we got to play a bunch of primetime games, I'd rather get it out of the way early. Um, I know it's great for the team. Being featured nationally, everybody gets to see you. Uh, it's kind of those pivotal games where you really put your mark on the league. I don't care what the analysts are saying about us nationally. I don't care about, you know, other franchises being exposed to the Bills and knowing who we are. I don't care about any about any of that. I care about what happens in our building, what our team's doing. And I honestly prefer that like the national narrative is is to sleep on us. Um that being said, we're gonna be out there in the public eye. So tough, tough stretch to start the season, and a lot of these games are gonna be, you know, national games. So coming off the Thursday game in Miami, um, coming back at home against the Jags on Monday night football. Um, so kind of pound, point counterpoint to to my Thursday night point early in the season. Um, This is the stretch Thursday going into Monday, so you do get a little bit of extra rest. Um, Hopefully that's not a huge concern this early in the season, but what I do like about this is that a little bit of a longer week to prepare for the Jaguars. Um, Whatever it is about the Jaguars, we've had a hell of a time with them over the past few seasons. Um, some weird games. Um, I'm glad that this isn't, you know, Jags in London. Um, happy in general that we're not playing any international games. I'll, I'll say that right now. Um, hopefully we can use that extra couple days and, and have, you know, the right plan for the Jaguars because I, they're like a good but not great team that just kind of has a blueprint to to frustrate us. Um, so hopefully getting them early in the season, they have some stuff that they're figuring out there. Obviously, you know, a homecoming game for Mitch Morris, Gabe Davis. Um, so some interesting dynamics there. Um, coming off that Monday night game, you're headed to Baltimore. Uh, I think this is going to be a tough game. Um, I think, historically speaking, we've had good answers for Lamar Jackson, but you're adding the dynamic of Derrick Henry to this backfield with him. Um, And they might not be, like, you know, the most prolific passing offense, but they have a good blend of, you know, having a solid ground game. And this has been done for years years with that team with kind of no name next guy up running backs um and then having field stretchers and I think this is kind of a get ready to get punched in the face kind of game probably low scoring defensive game and uh, a game that's going to be about physicality and discipline so Tough matchup there on prime time. And then the following week, beautiful Sunday at one o'clock. And this game I'm super surprised is slotted at a one o'clock time frame. And that's at Houston. Um, I thought for sure this was going to be a prime time game. 
Um, you know, you got two AFC playoff teams. You have an ascending team, an ascending quarterback, CJ Stroud. You have the storyline of Diggs being traded from Buffalo to Houston. You know, a lot of times there's like a lot made of these revenge games and like there's nothing there. Um, we still haven't heard like the full story and we probably never will. Um, feels like there was some bad blood between Buffalo and Diggs for Buffalo to be willing to ship him out and make their team worse to eat all that dead cap, literally pay him more to not be on the team than to be here. Um, this is one that I know I'm going to sound kind of contradictory here. Um, because I don't love the primetime games. I think this is one that should have been a primetime game. Um, two offenses that look pretty high-powered. Uh, and and then the dig storyline, I, I think, is huge. Um, so after Houston headed up to New Jersey to take on the Jets on Monday Night Football, I think this is an interesting one. The Jets are still getting a ton of primetime games and I don't know what they've really done to merit that other than signing Aaron Rodgers and yes they're a different team with Rodgers there they've been competitive um, even when he was hurt and speaks volumes to the defense um, and some of the positions that they filled in around I think they're an interesting team I don't need to see them in prime time. I, I think they've, I, I believe they have six prime times game, prime time games, excuse me, which is the max. Um, I think that's kind of the NFL hype train, the big market. Um, not, I don't know, man. The Jets have been a bottom dweller for a long time, and I don't want to get too big of an ego, get too cocky about a Jets game, but. Uh, I'm personally not scared of the Jets. Um, following the Jets, we're headed back home to Tennessee for a beautiful 1 o'clock kickoff. Um, Tennessee, I think, is a, a real interesting matchup here. Uh, it, it's one of the only games on the schedule where we're getting you know, a younger quarterback. I know we just talked about Houston, C.J. Stroud, you know, going into his second year. Um Stroud isn't like your your typical young quarterback. He came in and he lit the league up last year. Will Levis was kind of like, honestly reminds me of a young Josh Allen where, you know, he might not be super accurate and super in rhythm, uh, but just kind of his physical abilities. If he catches you sleeping, he can make you pay. Um, and it's a team that's kind of, done a good job of loading up on on weapons around him. So I, I think Tennessee's an interesting game there. Um, for all those things I just said, you that's, that's a game you better come away with a win. Um, headed out to Seattle uh, following Tennessee. Um, West Coast trips, I, I would prefer these. I guess this is still kind of early in the season. Um, I like the West Coast trips to be a little bit closer to the bye. Um, just to, you know, kind of... I've, I've done some traveling. The jet lag is real. It throws off your whole routine. Um, and then following that Seattle game, you're right back at home for a matchup against Miami. Um don't really care so much about headed to the West Coast as much as, you know, you're getting back home and that game against Miami is, is probably going to be a pretty big one, not just, you know, for its implications in the AFC in general, um, but for the division. That was your, you know, second place in the division last year. Obviously, it takes till the last week of the season for the Bills to, to take the division from them. Um I'm interested to see what Miami looks like this year. I think they're kind of, I don't know, sneakily headed in the wrong direction, you know, letting Christian Wilkins walk, 
Um, you still haven't got a deal done for Tua, and you're losing a player like Wilkins. Um, I don't know. They're they're interesting, but for my money, that's your biggest competition in in the division. So you know, having to come back from the West Coast and and square up with Miami, um, don't don't really love how that that one shakes out. Um, after Miami headed to Indianapolis to take on the Colts, um, this schedule came out. That's a 1 p.m. game, by the way. Um, when we first saw our opponents, the Colts were somebody that I wanted early in the season. Um, personally love Anthony Richardson. He kind of like ends up with like a redshirt rookie year. Um, just dealt with injuries early and then obviously missed the rest of the season. Um, he's a quarterback I'm very high on. I, he's got all the physical tools, and this Colts team was a nuisance all year without him. Um, obviously, add some talent, and you add Anthony Richardson back into the mix. I wanted them early in the season, so you know it's kind of that young quarterback, young team you know just kind of trying to figure everything out um I think that's low-key a tougher game than what people are going to give it credit for on the schedule um and then this next stretch here is kind of for the three stretch three week stretch that it is um that we we knew these opponents were going to be on the schedule. I kind of like how this one shook out. Of uh, You have Kansas City at home, uh, 425 kickoff. Then week 12, you're going to have your bye week. And then coming out of the bye, you have the 49ers on Sunday night football. Um, so I think that's, you know, kind of easily two of your toughest opponents on the schedule. Um You've had some success with Kansas City at home. I think this is one that either way it, it goes, if you take a loss there, um, you still have some time at the end of the season to make up for it. You're headed into the bye to, you know, kind of lick your wounds, get healthy, um, really be able to turn the page on that game, whichever way it goes, um, to then take on, you know, a, a tough opponent in the 49ers. Uh, McDermott's been great out of the bye week. Um, I think the matchup with Purdy is interesting. It's obviously a team loaded with, you know, skill position talent. Um, but Purdy's not like, you know, one of those super physically gifted, you know, crazy elite quarterbacks. Um, very much, you know, like the super high end of a a system quarterback, whatever you want to call it. I know that gets negative connotation. That's not me. I think everybody's a system quarterback to an extent, but neither here nor there. Um, I like getting the 49ers out of the bye. And a a huge part of it for me is the success McDermott's had against teams coming out of the bye. Um, And I, I will say... Don't want to glaze over this too much. I love the week 12 buy. Um, seems like every year, like last year, we had a later buy and we, you know, had all kinds of injuries earlier. And then I was, you know, kind of sitting here wishing we had an earlier buy because we, you know, had to get right injury wise. And then it ends up being kind of, we got players back. There was more injuries. Um, Last year, towards the end of the season, we did kind of get healthy at the right time, and then we just got re-injured. Um, so I like the the late season by. I think it's a good time for some rest to get some players right. Um, maybe, you know, by then you've been dealing with some injuries and you have a couple guys that are close, and maybe you give them off for that Kansas City game and just get them, you know, basically three weeks of extra rest getting ready for that home stretch or that that the end stretch of the season um 
historically Super Bowl winners are having late season buys. I think the most important thing in all of football is one luck and two, it's getting healthy and getting hot at the right time. Um, so I love the later buy. Um, there's teams out there with like a week five buy. That's gross. Um, I never want to see that on the bill schedule. Um, and kind of looking at that Kansas City game and the San Francisco game, it's like, damn, that's that's a tough stretch there. Um, and, and for me, my mind is like, go one and one there, and I'm pretty psyched. And then I start looking ahead again, and it's it's really that Kansas City through week 15 stretch there of uh, you're headed out to LA to take on the Rams. Um, I think that's a team that's remained super competitive. Um, and then after that headed to Detroit, which again, I don't have to tell you much about Detroit. That's a team that I, I, it's very similar to the bills to me of just a team that's been, that was down for a really long time that's ascended that looks like they they don't ever want to give that up again um obviously you know we've played them a couple times over the past few years the thanksgiving game comes to mind of you know coming down to a field goal um i think detroit's a real tough out and that is a tough stretch right there um Obviously, when you're kind of looking at the schedule, it's it's not like this. It's not a schedule with like you know a bunch of cupcake games. It's it's what happens when you're finishing in first place. Um, tough stretch there, and then to end the season, I I have mixed feelings about this because um, you have New England twice in three weeks and the Jets sandwiched in between there, and. Part of me is like, you know, with the Jets in there, they have, you know, some older players that have dealt with a lot of injuries. How healthy are they going to be? Um, how healthy are they throughout the season? How much does does this game really mean for them? Um, and similar but different for New England, you know, kind of rebuilding their franchise. Drafted Drake May this year. This is one I wish we had them at least once earlier in the season to like have that that true McDermott versus like a rookie quarterback. You're not getting him till week 16. Um, so, you know, maybe he still looks like a day one rookie by then. I think by week 16, whatever's going to be clicking is going to be clicking by then. And, you know, Maybe by then they they had a rough start to the season and they're not playing for anything anymore. And, you know, they don't want to play Drake May and they're looking towards 2026. Um, I think there's a good chance that they're not really playing for anything at that juncture. Um, but ton of change in, in New England. Obviously, Bill Belichick's gone. Um, you got a new quarterback there. Uh would have loved to see them early in the season and just have that be one that I can just look at. There's a win. Um, still very confident in those games. Uh, but New England, historically, it's, it's a tough out. They're going to play defensive football. Um, but I like the way this sets up for, for the end of the season is kind of like, if the Bills take care of their business throughout the season, uh, you could kind of have a three-week stretch here where it may not be super vital games, might not be super competitive games. You know, the Bills could be in a position where they're, you know, kind of coasting out the end of the season, and this could be, a, you know, a few opponents or a few games against two opponents that might not mean very much to them. Um, so hopefully you can come through this stretch. You know, we're in the business of 
trying to get a one seed here. Maybe you look at that as, you know, the Bills got the one seed, got these extra three games here that don't mean much, and you're going into the playoffs, you know, super fresh. You can rest a couple guys that are dealing with some things. Um, the NFL's weird. That's my idealistic look at it. It's probably not going to be the case. Um, I will say one one thing that I do really like about this, you know, not having a cupcake schedule is the Bills love losing a game they shouldn't to some terrible opponent. Um, and I don't really see that on this schedule here. Um, we got the Cardinals week one. That that would be, you know, the first opportunity of it. Um, and then probably not till Tennessee, which I think is a team that you should beat, but I don't think it's, you know, a cupcake game. Um, and then you don't really have too many other games in there. This is obviously based off of kind of like last year and what we think we know about these teams. And the NFL is weird and, you know, a, a team that's supposed to be bad will blow up. A team that's supposed to be good will collapse. Um, but as far as, you know, the Bills going out and handling their business, um, I think we've seen moments where the team plays down to its competition and you often get the best version of the Bills when they're playing, like, equal level competition. Um, so I like that. Um, I like that there's not holiday games. Um, the NFL keeps expanding this. Um, Christmas, Black Friday, Thanksgiving. Um, I... I like football on those days. Um, I like watching the Bills whenever. Um, when you lump in, you know, doing a show like this and the the games aren't always, you know, just for your pure enjoyment. You're kind of figuring out what you're going to talk about and, you know, trying to give your best thoughts on the game, you know, when it's Thanksgiving dinner and you're catching up with relatives you haven't seen in a while and families in town and all that, you're not as locked. You, nobody's as locked in on the game. Um, so I think it adds, adds a challenge to that. It also kind of like makes a nice relaxing holiday that you're not working, um, become like a pseudo work day. Um, I'm sure there's people out there that, that love the holiday games. It's, it's not for me. Um, and the other thing that I will wrap up with of what I really like about the schedule is no international games. Um, and throw in there too, um, the Thursday night game being early in the season. Um, I'm not a fan of Thursday night football. I'm not a fan of international games. I know they're not going anywhere. It's, you know, making the NFL bigger, kind of growing its product, bringing in more money. And that's a whole topic for another day of, yeah, that that's good for the league, so it should be good for us, whatever. Um, I, I'm not a fan of those games. We've seen all kinds of horrible dynamics for, for teams across the league, not just the Bills. Um, We've seen Thursday night football for years just, you know, just be an inferior product. It's often teams nobody cares about. Um, you get weird results because you're dealing with short weeks, injuries, you know, players that would have been able to play if it was a Sunday, but they can't play because they've gotten two days rest. Uh, all those weird dynamics. Don't love those games. Uh, glad to not be a part of them. Um, where do I see this shaking up for the Bills? Um, I'm not really doing a formal prediction yet. Uh, I think there's still a lot to see, uh, you know, teams kind of rounding out their rosters, seeing how things shake out. We're, we're still solid and what, 
four, three, four months away from actual football being played. So I, there's there's still a ton that we need to see. I don't think the Bills are done tinkering with this roster, especially with the Trey White money um, sitting out there in a couple weeks. Um, my my first anticipatory glance at this and just kind of throwing a feeling number out there. I think we still have an 11 plus win team here. Um, I think it's a team that still wins the division. Um, like I said earlier, I, I see the Jets as competition with Aaron Rodgers, but he's another year older coming off a serious injury. Um, still don't love the line protecting him. And then Miami, you know, I think is our biggest threat for the division. I just I don't like what they're doing with their team right now. I, I, Wilkins is a guy I wouldn't have let leave the door. Um, I know they're going to extend Tua, and like as a Bills fan, like yeah, go ahead do it. He like he put up monster stats last year, but I, I've seen many games where it, you know fourth quarter with one possession left, and and he's not able to get it done. Um, but like what, what they're doing with Tua? Like I'd I'd be losing my mind right now as a Dolphins fan. Like you know you're gonna extend him. You know he was one of the finalists for MVP voting last year, and you're you're letting him sit out there and dudes like uh, dudes getting contracts that are just raising how much his his is going to be. I mean, you Jared Goff got, you know, 55 million dollar extension. You're you're going to pay to a and I, I personally like if if I was a fan of that team like he, you got to get that deal done if you're going to do it because it, it's just going to keep getting more expensive. Um so I uh, don't I love pieces of what Miami's doing. Don't really... I guess I'm struggling to see kind of their their vision on some of their other pieces. Um, So I I think this is a team... A lot of people are, you know, kind of concerned with... How much talent we've lost. You know, losing a guy like Diggs and, you know not going to the top of the first round to replace him and not double dipping at receiver. Um, I think we see, you know, the the Bills still adding, just brought in MVS, uh, Marcus Veldis, Scantlang. I think it's a pretty minimal type deal. We just saw them add a safety and the corresponding move was releasing Quint- Quintez Cephas. Um, so... I don't, I don't, I don't know what the next move is, um, and maybe they're done at receiver now with MVS in the building. Um, but the fact that they're still tinkering with it and still playing with it kind of tells me that there there might be another move coming there when we have actual money to spend. Um, just a couple weeks out when we hit June first. Um, so I'll I'll have a more formal prediction, and I'll I'll give you game by game. You know where I think we're we'll win, what losses we might take, um, but that'll be coming a little bit further into the off season. Um, I had initially planned on doing my way too early roster projections starting this week, um, and we've just seen kind of a few moves, and that's why it's the way too early one. Um, spoiler alert: I did have Quintez Cephas getting cut, so. Plus one there. Um, well, we'll start doing diving into that next week with the offense, followed up with the defense, and kind of tinker as we go um, as we look at the Bills roster headed into the 2025 season. Uh, but that's going to do it for tonight's show. Thank you again for joining me. If you've made it all the way through this show, why not drop a follow, subscribe, like the show, um, tell a friend about it. We're kind of being a little bit fluid with the offseason here. Um, when we release. So make sure you're subscribed so you're not missing any episodes. Um, the off season gets kind of weird and we release the show once a week. So, 
you know, and try to do it in time frames where by the time you're not getting the news, it's all old news and I'm not giving you, you know, anything to really chew on. I'm trying to stay as current as possible. So stay fluid with us. Make sure you're subscribed so you're not missing any episodes and we will see you next week. As always, go Bills. Oh, 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 oh